everyone, Edloy here with another update. The last time I mentioned that I'm currently rewriting the existing widgets to use the theming system to apply their color, sizing, and basically everything for the styling. And as I was doing that, I had to create additional ways to apply theming so that the whole definition can be in one place and meaningfully grouped, let's say. For instance, just applying styling for the main component, like the background of this uh, floating panel, was already done. Of course, uh, it had to be uh, injected for uh, the floating panel and now it's using it. But there are cases when you don't just want the style, the, the main entity, but other components of the entity that make up the whole widget. For instance, here is this little checkbox. And as you can see, if I hover over it, the whole thing, the border of the checkbox and the text too, uh, gains a highlight color. And to make this happen, I introduced a context to the styling that you can switch between and say that, okay, if I'm interacting with the main box, uh, I want to style the other sub boxes. However, when it comes to more complex widgets that, uh, for instance, again, this uh, floating panel is a good example where I want to style the sub components, but I also want them to detect their own interactions. For instance, this little uh, fold button that you see here, I'm not sure if it's, uh, quite visible, but uh, there is a little highlight when I'm going close enough to it. The same goes for this close button. And in these cases, I want the interaction of the actual button to style the button itself. And until just yesterday, this wasn't uh, straightforward. I could have created theming specifically for the close button of floating panels and the fold button of uh, floating panels, but that would be a little less intuitive and uh, centralized than how I would want it. I want the floating panel to style all of its components, but to allow them to detect their own uh, interaction, I actually need to, to place the dynamic styling on this component, which means I'm no longer proxying uh, the interaction from the outside, but rather placing the uh, styling straight on the, um, the button. And for this, uh, I had to implement another indirection to make it possible to add the, the styling directly on the component. However, adding this ability to move or place the styling on certain components also uh, opened the possibility of uh, proxying the, uh, the interaction from one thing to another, um, regardless of, of where you are in the, the widget tree. So let's say I could um, hover over this thing and change the background color of the, uh, the whole floating panel simply because I can proxy the interaction from this one to another part of the, the floating panel. And just to show you how the floating panel styling looks like right now, and it's not done yet, I still have to do more styling on the precise handles and, and whatnot, but for the moment, uh, what you have seen is already here. So basically, the floating panel has a theme uh, with a base theme and the folded theme. The folded part is uh, there to change the icon, for instance, on the fold button, and uh, probably I will implement the sizing to be uh, not just a you know, disappear and, and reappear thing, but rather an animation. And the theme for the floating panel, the base one is actually quite simple. So for the panel itself, the whole frame, it just has a border and a background color. And this is the first indirection I talked about uh, right here, where I'm switching targets to the title container. This means that the dynamic style will still be placed on the main entity, but it's not going to be applied to the main entity, rather to something else. In this case, the title container, which is the top bar, basically, that contains the title, the fold uh, button, and the close button, which again just has a background color. Then uh, I switch target again to the title and uh, just set the font and, and such. Then moving on, we have the close button, same thing and the fold button, which is something that already has 
an animation on itself. So it's not the same switch target uh, that you see up here. Rather, we have a switch context to the fold button, and this one is the target of the interaction. Uh, this is the part where you can uh, make things affect something else based on their interaction. And I will, I have a little example here that I'm going to uncomment here just to show you how easy it is to do something. Anyway, uh, the fold button is just a box with a margin and an icon uh, with an animated uh, color for the font. Uh, so when you hover over it, it changes uh, the color to its highlight color. And the thing I uncommented here is basically I'm switching target. Uh, keep in mind that this is continuous. So uh, the previous context is still in place. Um, so this is just uh, um, switching to the target when I'm placing it on the fold button. So it, this is a bit weird, but I, I would probably not do it like this, but you know, um, make it clear that the context is uh, from the fold button to the context, the, to, to the content you, but it's not necessary um, for, for this quick example. Anyway, I'm going to animate the background color uh, of the content view, which is the main area of the floating panel um, with a simple color shift based on uh, when we uh, interact with the fold button. And I'm going to build it uh, right now and show you. Uh, but moving on, we have the same thing for the close button that we had for the folding button, which again is just a size box with an icon and an animated color. And the folded one is just really switching the icon for the fold button for the moment. And to show you the effect of this, let me build this real quick. There you go. I'm going to pop out the floating panel again. And uh, what we did, um, we changed the whole color of this one based on the interaction of this. Quite nice, isn't it? And I might actually leave it like this because I kind of like um, the highlight effect of what you are going to, you know, make disappear. It might be a bit too strong though. Anyway, uh, as you as you could see, it's quite easy to add um, such interactivity between uh, elements or components of the of uh, one um, widget. And I'm going to extend this because currently uh, the drop downs that I have refactored do not use this approach because the the individual drop down options still have their own theme because there are multiple ones actually when you create them. And the current implementation of this context switching thing only allows switching to context that you actually know. And actually, you know, it's a one, one thing. You switch context to one thing. It's not a switch context to some abstract thing, but I'm probably going to make it um, an enum or something to indicate when it's a single map or, you know, a map to multiple things, uh, maybe even allow a lookup uh, and not rely on stored uh, entity IDs, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to refactor this. And the cool thing uh, now that I'm here with the dropdowns uh, that I wanted to show is the dropdowns actually use one of the features of uh, the theming that not, it, that doesn't, that is not necessary for other components like the, uh, the floating panel, not not yet anyway, but the drop downs actually use a word uh, theme builder approach, where it's not relying on the theme data. It actually relies on the world, because the drop down needs to know how much space it has to place the drop down itself. So that's why I actually have four drop downs here to check the four you know corner cases, um, pun intended. Um, because in this case, the, the clip area is actually the floating panel. So I, I can't put the drop down anywhere else, basically just inside this uh, area. So this one is like a normal one, but this one goes the other way. So the anchoring is on the right side of the bottom here to make it uh, use all of the space it can. 
and the bottom ones actually go up uh, so uh, they can they are still usable even if they are down in the corner and the last thing i wanted to show you is um, just a, a quick example of, of actually switching the themes you, you have probably already seen the light dark uh, things and uh, the contrast thing in the drop down uh, these are not wired up in the floating panel but the ones up here are actually uh, wired up so i can switch to a light theme uh, i probably should have warned you of the blinding experience um, and as you can see the the radio buttons are still not done but the floating panel oh, and the little hover effect we did actually uh, already uh, follows this and my checkbox checkbox as well uh, the checkbox actually has this little enter effect uh, that makes it look nice the same as what you've seen in the drop downs actually I, I i think you have probably seen how nice it slides up which is also a feature of uh, the theming system anyway the color scheme for the the theming relies on uh, material uh, color definition so a material theme is actually um, in, in there somewhere for the default colors so making a parser for a material json um, would probably be a good idea later on but anyway i have the light and the dark theme and then each of the themes have their own uh, contrast levels so i can uh, switch to uh, medium contrast and then high contrast on the dark one and the light one also has the same uh, levels of contrast values anyway uh, that that's all for now i'm going to continue uh, as i said rewriting the uh, all of the widgets and completing them because as, as we did the, the drop down it wasn't really done uh, it, it was just something that i threw together to to have a functioning uh, widget but it didn't handle all of these uh, really important things making itself visible and such and it also currently it's not visible but it also uh, uses the proxy approach to tell the scroll view to actually not show the scroll bars as it's folding out so that's also a neat little uh, hook I, I put in there just for the sake of this and uh, this is the point of uh, me converting all of the widgets that I'm actually using my own system and add all the little and major things that are currently missing to make it usable and functioning and again uh, the styling for the drop down is not too much more than the styling for the uh, the floating panel which makes it uh, feel like a good approach to to follow through well okay the drop downs actually need like 700 lines of code to calculate all of the positioning of the drop down and whatnot but ignore that for the moment <laughs> you don't have to care about it uh, probably ever um but it's possible so it's actually using the same thing and the calculations done here are something that cannot be avoided so i i don't blame that on my theming system actually anyway um i get back to it and talk to you next time until then have fun ciao ciao